Welcome to Lesson 3 of Module 5 on Extended Query Formulation with SQL. I'm going to start with an important motivational question. Why are joint operations and grouping a powerful combination, especially for business intelligence processing? Lesson 2 provided more realistic problems involving multiple tables. This lesson adds grouping requirements in addition to the requirements of multiple tables. The objectives in this lesson relate to solving more complex problems. First, you should be able to use the critical questions to analyze more complex problem statements with requirements for both multiple tables and row summaries. Second, you should be able to write correct and non-redundant select statements for more complex problems with multiple joins and grouping clauses. As you gain more confidence with more difficult problems, you should be able to use the critical questions implicitly while writing select statements. You should be very familiar with the university database diagram from past lessons. The examples in this lesson involve three, four, and five tables connected by relationships. After identifying required tables for a problem, you should use the university database diagram to understand the connections. For example, to combine the course and student tables, you need to use the offering enrollment tables as the course and student tables are not directly connected. Now, let's use the critical questions on example one, answering the questions before reviewing the associated select statement. For the first critical question involving the tables, the enrollment table is needed because the result includes the number of students enrolled. The offering table is needed because of the condition on offering year. The student table is needed because the result contains the average student GPA. Now for the second critical question on combining the tables, the offering enrollment tables must be joined in offer number using a condition with the primary key foreign key of the tables. The enrollment and student tables must be joined on student number using a condition with the primary key foreign key of the tables. Now for the third critical question concerning individual rows versus groups of rows. Groups of rows are needed because the result includes the average student GPA and a condition involves the average student GPA. The select statement shows three columns in the result including two computed columns using the count and average or AVG functions. Note that the usage of renaming with the as clause to ensure meaningful column names in the result table. The from clause uses the cross product join style to combine the student, enrollment, and offering tables. The where clause has two join conditions and a condition on offering year. The group by clause includes the offer number column. The having clause includes a condition using the AVG or average function. You should see the Module 5 examples for an equivalent statement using the join operator style. Let's execute example 1 and check the results. The result contains two rows for two course offerings. Both result rows have average GPA greater than 3.3. Let's use the critical questions on example two, answering the questions before reviewing the associated select statement. For the first critical question on the tables, the offering table is needed because of conditions on offering year and term, as well as columns in the result, course number and offer number. The enrollment table is needed because of the number of students enrolled in the result. The course table is not needed because course number can be taken from the offering table as this column does not have null values. The student table is not needed because no columns are used. The enrollment table can be used to compute the number of students enrolled as each enrollment row is associated to a student row. Now for the second question on combining the tables, the offering enrollment tables must be joined at offer number using a condition with the primary key, foreign key of the tables. Now for the third question about individual rows versus groups of rows. Groups of rows are needed because the result includes the number of students enrolled, computed using the count function. 
The select statement shows three columns in the result, including an aggregate computation using the count function. Note the use of renaming with the as keyword to ensure a meaningful column name in the result table. The from clause uses the cross product join style to combine the enrollment and offering tables. The where clause has one join condition and conditions an offering year and term. You should see module 5 for examples of an equivalent statement using the join operator style. The group by clause includes the offer number and course number columns. Both columns must be included in the group by clause as they are used in the select clause. Every column in the select clause must be in the group by clause except for columns used in aggregate function calculations. Let's execute example 2 and check the results. The result contains three rows for course offerings of IS 480, Finance 480, and IS 460. Note that a syntax error occurs if the course number column does not appear in the group by clause. The select clause contains two columns, offer number and course number, that are not involved in aggregate calculations. Thus, both columns must be in the group by clause to prevent a syntax error. Now, let's use the critical questions on example 3, answering the questions before reviewing the associated select statement. Example 3 involves more tables than previous examples in this lesson. For the first critical question on the tables, the offering table is needed because of the conditions on offering year and term. The student table is needed because the result contains the average student GPA. The faculty table is necessary because the faculty name columns are in the result. The enrollment table is needed because it connects the offering and student tables. The course table is not needed because the offering table can provide the course number column and the offering.course number column does not have missing or null values. For the second question on combining the tables, the faculty and offering tables must be joined on fact number using a primary key foreign key condition. The offering enrollment tables must be joined on offer number using a condition with the primary key foreign key of the tables. The enrollment and student tables must be joined on student number using a condition with the primary key foreign key of the tables. Now for the third critical question on individual rows versus groups of rows. Groups of rows are needed because the result includes average student GPA and a condition involving the average student GPA. Let's execute example 3 and check the results. The result contains two rows with five columns including the computed column for average student GPA. Let's wrap up Lesson 3 about problems involving multiple tables and grouping. The lesson demonstrated analysis of problem statements using the critical questions in the formulation of select statements using the cross product join style and grouping clauses. You saw problems involving multiple tables and grouping. One example demonstrated grouping on multiple columns to depict the rule requiring all result columns except aggregate function calculations to be in the group by result. In answer to the opening question, joins and grouping are very common to support business intelligence. As you will see in course 2, data warehouses use a table design pattern that requires join operations combined with grouping in most queries. Course 3 will provide many examples of these types of queries along with DBMS features to support business intelligence processing.